Good evening, Matanistas. I'm obviously not in Switzerland. I'm actually in Dublin, Ireland at the moment, but rest assured, this is a football vlog. I'm going to start you off here because it's been about a decade since I've been in Ireland. We're going to have a couple of pints of Guinness, but then we'll head over to Switzerland for the match day vlog of Young Boys of Bern against Manchester City. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, it's been about a decade since I was last here. And I don't bring you Guinness very often in the UK in my football vlogs or other food vlogs. And there's a good reason for that. It's chalk and cheese. It's so different. It is so much better here. Yes, there are a couple of places where it's decent in the UK, but here, different gravy, I can assure you. And even if you don't think it's your sort of drink, if you happen to be over here, I really would recommend you try it. Well, I have to say, this Bridge 1859 place doesn't look like a pub serving good Guinness, but it's been given to me on good authority that it does, so let's give it a go. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Okay, Muttonistas, the moment of truth. This has been a 10-year wait, I think. That is just miles better than anything I've had in the UK. And I think next we might be going somewhere even better. Okay, Matanistas. Now, that was a pleasant pub. The food, the bar snacks were pretty good as well. Bit more of a gastro pub than a sort of traditional drinker's pub. Now, this one is a hardcore drinker's pub. And if the reviews are to be believed, it has the world's second best pint of Guinness. I can't wait for this. And I hope those reviews are right. Okay folks, I've been waiting for this for about a decade. This is supposed to be the second best Guinness pub in the world. It should taste like mother's milk. Let's give it a go. Yes, that is like mother's milk. I can see a sore head coming tomorrow. I'll see you in Switzerland for the rest of the vlog and the football. Okay, Matanistas, call it a little white lie or a massive whopper. I haven't left for Switzerland yet. I felt there was one pub in Dublin that I really have to take you to. It's supposed to be the mecca for Guinness in the whole of the planet, a pub reputed by all the experts to have the best Guinness. It's busy even in the middle of the afternoon, and you might notice it's next to a graveyard. That's why they call it the Grave Diggers, because apparently the people who used to work in the cemetery, or still do, come for a pint after they finish work. I, can't, I just can't wait to try their Guinness. Have I found the Holy Grail Matanistas? Well, let's find out. One thing to add, it's wet, it's windy, but you never get wet in the pub. Okay, here we have it. I'm hoping this is going to be a special moment. That is quite exceptional. Not sure whether this is better, the same, or worse than Bose. I think it probably edges Bose, but who cares, it's a great pint, and I can see myself having more than one here. Now, before I go on to talk about football a bit, I'll tell you that this pub is a bit out of the way. It happens to be on a major bus route, and that's the way I came. Not often I take buses, but it's worth a detour for sure. And it's like half four in the afternoon, absolutely heaving. God knows what it's like at eight o'clock at night. 
Now, obviously, it is not match day. That goes without saying. But I can preview the match a bit for you before bringing you the team news on the day of the match. And I think this is going to be a comfortable assignment for City. Leipzig won 3-1 at Bern. We beat Leipzig 3-1. Now, I know football doesn't always work like that. But teams in pot three and pot four of the group don't seem as strong as they have been in the past to me. And after our three-game losing wobble, which was without Rodri, of course, we now have everybody back, I think, except for Kevin De Bruyne. So I think a full-strength City team will take the young boys to the cleaners. 3-0 to City is my prediction. Anyway, I'm match fit. I'm raring to go and get the plane, but... I'm going to have a couple of these first, so this time the video will most definitely be moving on to Switzerland. OK, Matanistas, we're in Switzerland now. I'm not actually in Bern because I'm actually going to go there on match day. I'm in Montreux near Lake Geneva and I am going to bring you one of Switzerland's classic dishes, cheese fondue. Now, I know the French lay claim to this as well, but rather than arguing about who owns the dish, let's call it a general alpine dish, shall we? Now then, Matanistas, I've brought you this food sketch the evening before the match because I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to bring you a food segment on the day of the match given my hotel and my transport arrangements. Anyway, we had a nice bottle of Swiss red wine called 1820. Funnily enough, Swiss wine is quite decent. Doesn't travel, though. You only ever see it in Switzerland. Some people say you should have white wine with this meal. I think they're right, actually, but red goes with it as well. Anyway... The ingredients for this meal are actually pretty simple. It revolves around bread and cheese, basically. White bread, usually. Two types of cheeses, Gruyere and Vacherin. I've seen other cheeses involved, but I'm not sure they're so authentic. Salad is an optional extra here. I personally think it balances off the meal nicely, but of course, the star of the show is the cheese. We here went for a two-cheese-with-black-truffle fondue, Possibly a little bit OTT, Matanistas. And the way you eat it is actually very, very simple. You plunge the fork into the cheese with a piece of bread attached to it, and you just mop up bits of cheese so that the bread is actually sodden with cheese. Stick it in your mouth, enjoy the cheesy goodness, have a quick slurp, and Bob's your uncle. Anyway, enough waffle, let's go to burn for the game. OK, Matanistas, we are now at the stadium. Bit of a weird setup here because it seems to be built into a shopping mall. Most unusual. And you can see behind me people taking beer from tents and hot dogs and things, but also people going for their pre-match food and, well, beers served in glasses as opposed to plastic cups inside the shopping centre. I haven't eaten today, so I'm going to follow suit and join them. So I've decided to go into this Italian place. It's just like a deli. You take what you want. They heat it up in the microwave and they've got a bar as well. And it's so packed we're having to share a table with two burn supporters. Very basic for capture served in a pizza style. I'll have a quick slurp of this eight franc half bottle of wine, which might not be too good and I'll see you outside for some beers when the team news comes out. OK, Matanistas, we had to retreat inside because it started raining outside, and the team news for European games comes out a quarter of an hour earlier than it does for the Premier League games. And we have seven changes for City tonight. Edison back in goal, Akanji, Diaz, Ake, and another start for the promising young Rico Lewis, who has put in a fair few good performances this season. In midfield, we have a start for Mateus Nunes. Also, another start for Mateo Kovacic, who nearly got sent off last time out. And, of course, the ever-dependable and important Rodri. And up front, we have both Grealish and Doku on the wings, with Haaland up front. This should be very interesting. It's a very wide attack attacking ploy from Guardiola this is and I'm interested to see how 90 minutes of Jeremy Doku against Swiss defenders will turn out. 
And whilst I don't know that much about the young boys team, I have been informed that the guy who plays in the hole just behind the strikers, Metchak Elia, number 15, is the danger man. City can't really underestimate this team, even though we're a better team, because this is a big night, a massive night at home for them. Their supporters will be well up for it. The team will be motivated. We keep them quiet. First 15, 20 minutes, we get the first goal, and I think it'll all calm down, and City will get that comfortable 3-0 win that I've predicted. Anyway, I'm match fit. We're going to head to the ground after this. Come on, City. Beers are available in the stadium and I've got the local sausage as the home fans advise me to get. You're only getting a few seconds of this because I can't carry it. And isn't it so pleasant to be able to bring a pint of beer to your seat? Well, we're 24 in now, not much has happened. City have just probably had the best chance of the game where the goalkeeper made what looked like a routine save. But I have to say, so far it's been like a game of chess. City have been very careful with possession. Young boys have capitalised on the odd bit of slot. Nothing at either end. That's what we have to be careful about. Kovacic gave the ball away in a bad position there and they nearly counted and scored. Five minutes before half-time, this has developed into an awful scuffy game. I'm not enjoying this at all. I wish I could go off to get beer, which they're serving all throughout the match, but I might just do that. Go on. Second half started, didn't bring you much of a half-time review, no first half review at all, boring half, City dominated it, couldn't break them down, can't blame them for playing that way, and I think they actually played pretty well, young boys, they tried to move forward swiftly on the counter-attack, but I still think City are going to grind this one out. Good job I brought my beers and pretzel down with me at half time. Didn't take long for City to get into gear in the second half. Ball smashed off the bar and then Manuel Akanji smashed on the rebound. 1 0 City. I can see that being enough to win the game. And the in stadium beer is much better than that I was getting at Leipzig. Oh. Well, 
so much for the half-time beer and the pretzel, which again is better than Leipzig. But deary me, what a defensive mess up, allowing Edison to be lobbed up from that. Oh dear, one all. It was Elia who the young boy supporters warned me would be their danger player. We've got to do better than this, but I'm sure we'll be all right. Even a draw will be okay, but come on City, you can do better than this. Oh. Son Jack. Get it? Yeah! Penalty to City. I'm not sure about the rules here. Should the ref allowed the play to have gone on? Because the ball was played out from Grealish. I'm not sure it was two actually in the clear. Maybe they should have waited and seen whether a goal would have been scored beforehand. If you know better, please let me know. Anyway, let's hope we score this. Erling Haaland's pretty reliable. Great penalty, hard into the corner, as is usually the case. 2-1 City. Surely we won't let it slip this time. Well, that was very messy. The ball went around like a pinball. And I'm sure this is going to be VAR because a young boys player went down. But when the ball was played through, Julian Alvarez slotted it nicely home. Well, great finish, but is it going to stand? Yeah, ref is going over to the monitor, probably won't stand. OK, you can never see white clearly enough from the stands, but it did look like a foul from here. Maybe a bit excessive for a celebration about a disallowed goal when you're still 2-1 down. Go on! He hasn't had too many touches in this game. The penalty, a mischance and that, but didn't he finish that well? Smack into the top corner. And I have to say, as soon as the ball went to his feet, I had that feeling that was going in. That's 3-1 to City, and that's the match done and dusted. Three points, nine points from three games, and City probably through to the last 16.
Okay, Matanistas, I am in one of the bars on the perimeter of the stadium. Only City fan here in a City shirt. Who cares? They're all very welcoming here, as is the case mostly in Northern Europe. As for the post-match wrap, it's going to be a pretty short one, to be honest, because I have to say, for a long period of that game, the young boys played pretty well. In fairness, maybe I was being a little bit disrespectful when I thought a Kanji's opener was going to seal the game and seal the deal. But then Metchak Elia hit a beautiful lob and it took even home crowd a while to realise how delicate and beautiful that was to make it 1-1. I wouldn't say City were on the ropes at that point because young boys didn't fashion that many chances after that. But neither did we until their defence made a mistake and gave away a penalty. And I know Erling Haaland has missed one this season, but he was back to his crisp and fluent best there. Right into the corner, hard and low, no way you stop those. And then when he received the ball again for the chance for a third goal, I remember thinking the crowd, he's going to score that. And he did put the postage stamp on the top of the envelope there, right in the top corner. No way they were saving that. 3-1 to City, game done. Anyway, I've really enjoyed my trip here to Switzerland. Bit expensive, I have to say, but other than that, good beer, good food, good hospitality. Really friendly local supporters, including those who gave up half of their table for the pre-match dinner. And funnily enough, my next game is the home game against the young boys at the Etihad. I can't go away to United. Very hard to get tickets for league games there. Busy when we're at home to Bournemouth. So the return leg of this fixture, the fourth game, where hopefully we'll qualify for the last 16. I'll be there to bring you that vlog on the 7th of November. But until then, Mutton Easters, please remember, keep liking, keep subscribing, share it with your friends, and don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.